stay there. Hi everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. This is part two of our new view flooring, not sponsored, Ford Transit. In the last episode, we just finished replacing this right front CV output shaft seal. It was leaking trans fluid. It was leaking it really bad. It dumped it all over my leg earlier. Maybe I have to change my pants. Not cool. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and let this down. We're gonna shut the engine down. We're gonna finish pulling off the wheels and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my BG brake fluid exchange machine. If you happen to catch the last episode, powering down, if you happen to catch the last episode, we found that the brake fluid was nasty and green and the customer had requested that we replace it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the brake fluid exchange. Alrighty, first things first, we're going to need the machine. So let's go ahead and get this out of its storage corner. We'll roll it on over to our van and we'll prep this device. Basically what's going to happen here is we're going to fill this, uh, this chamber with our new brake fluid. We're then going to connect the pressure hose to the threaded portion of the master cylinder and it's going to pump brand new fresh brake fluid into that reservoir. Simultaneously, we're going to turn on the vacuum side of this machine and we're going to place that vacuum hose on each individual caliper bleeder valve. We're going to open up the valve and the machine is going to pressurize and pump in new fluid, simultaneously vacuuming out the old fluid, thus providing a very, very efficient fluid exchange procedure. So the first thing I need to do here is go ahead and pull the rest of these wheels off. That way we have access to our bleeder valves and we can go from there. All right, that was easy. So what we need to do now Let's go ahead and we'll bust into the adapter drawer here. Now we've got, what do we have on this? We've got a threaded, it's a threaded cap. So we have one threaded cap, two, we have two threaded caps here. I think that's the one. Let's get this guy attached to the master cylinder reservoir. Is that the right one? Uh, negative, that's not the right one. Maybe this one? That is correct. Now there's a gasket on there that creates a seal between the cap and the reservoir. Now we can go ahead and connect our pressure hose, which I believe is gonna be the pump hose. Let me see what we got here. Yep, that's the one. It's got a valve on it so we can close the flow. It's gonna be important later on. Connect that guy, valve closed. Good to go, hand tight. Let's go ahead and fill this with our new fluid. Remember earlier when I said this was not gonna be enough? This is what I meant. We need to use like an entire quart here. Not the, uh, not the little half pints or, what was that, 12 ounces? Yeah, yeah, that's just not gonna be enough for a full system exchange. However, I do have a use for this fluid. And I got ahead of myself earlier. Watch this, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna vacuum as much of the fluid out of this reservoir as I can with the vacuum device and then I'll refill it with this fluid and then I'll perform the flush procedure with the fluid that's gonna stay in the system. That way I'm not flushing old fluid through the system first and then just contaminating the new stuff. I can just run some new stuff through it straight away and then switch over to the better stuff. It makes sense to me, I hope it makes sense to you. So here, let's go ahead and prep this machine first. Uh, I need a pokey device. There we go, that's pokey. Okay, let's go ahead and fill our reservoir chamber. All the way to the top. You can see the line, the fill line coming up through the, uh, through the vessel. Okay, now this may take just one quart. I may have to use uh, two quarts. Because again, I'm not gonna let it leave with contaminated fluid because we're paying for an end result, not so much a procedure. There we go. And we need the suction on. I think that's vacuum pump operated. Yes, it is. Suction's good to go. Just can't get much out of this, but I can get something out. 
good so far. Shut her down. And then we'll go ahead and top this back off. Yeah. To its uh its full level. Whoop, a little too far. No worries. Mm, there it is. Begin threading now, please. Thank you. Click. Put that guy back on. This hose is pressurized. Remember when I said earlier we needed to close the valve? Once I connected the air supply line to the unit, it pressurized that hose right there. So if I were to go ahead and open this valve, it's now charging the system with pressurized brake fluid. Now that's regulated. We can change the pressure. And that's set a little too high for what I like. I like 15 pounds. Let me close that some. Yeah, 15, we're good right there. Okay, I'll check this out. Even at 15 pounds, it's applying brake pressure to the, uh, the calipers. I can't turn these. How about All right, that? What we need to do, we're gonna grab the suction hose, flip our pump back on, and we're gonna go around to the right rear uh, procedure states when bleeding brakes, you want to start at the furthest location from the master cylinder and then work your way to the closest lo location. So we would start at the right rear, move to the left rear, then move to the right front, and then move to the left front because that's closest to the master cylinder. Let's put that right there for now. And I need some lights in here. I can't see what I'm doing. A few dokes. Let's unload some of the tools from the pocket here. I brought an 8mm, a 10mm, and some pliers. I don't really need the pliers unless I can't get this rubber boot off of this, which I, I can. There we go, we got it. And that's pretty tiny, so I think that's a eight mil. Oh no, it's smaller. Wow, okay, let me grab my seven, be right back. Yeah, let's try this seven mil and see if that one fits. A little weird. Yep, the seven fits it, okay. Let's crack that guy loose. And we can confirm that we have fluid flow. Yes, we do. And it's green here as well. See that? That's nasty. So let's plug our hose in. Oop, lost it. Crack this open a little more until we get some flow. There we go. See our vacuum. I like to try to bridge the gap with this really far. See how it's doing that? Let's see how far I can take that gap. Little game that I play. All right, enough screwing around. So we're gonna plug this guy in for a little while and we're gonna go watch our reservoir vessel on the machine. There we go. Let's go check our machine real quick and we're gonna see that level fall. So we've pulled through about that much fluid. What I'm gonna do is hang out over here at the uh, the wheel and I'm just gonna randomly remove the line. Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna keep checking this every few seconds and once we get a clear fluid coming out that doesn't have that green hue to it, we'll know that this line and this rear wheel cylinder it has, uh, has been flushed clean and then we can move on to the left rear. It still looks kind of green. We'll let it ride for a little longer. There we go. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's recheck this and see what it looks like here. Ah, much better. See that? That tint is gone. All right, now what I'm going to do, this is very important, at least to me. I'm not going to remove this hose and then try to close that valve because that's this is under vacuum at this point. The vacuum is overpowering the, uh, the fluid flow of the pump. And if I pull this vacuum line off, it's possibly going to introduce some air into that cylinder. So I want to get this valve closed before removing that vacuum source. See that? I think that's... Oh, almost, I almost have it. Hang on. There we go. 
Okay. Now we'll crack it open one more time just to make sure there's no air hanging out. Compressor. Yep, see those bubbles? All right, and that's a click. Put that guy back. Let's go ahead and move over to the left rear next. All righty, we're getting into the left rear wheel. Same procedure. Compressor still compressing. Loud noises. Let's get that guy out of here. And we'll crack this guy loose. Let's see what we've got. Yep. There's that green again. See that green color? That's our contaminated brake fluid. And we're just gonna vacuum this out until we have clear. Okay, time for a recheck. Where's that compressor? Are we still greenish looking? Yeah. We'll go a little bit longer here. Checking the reservoir, it looks like we're gonna be able to accomplish this exchange with just one quart of fluid. I don't believe it's gonna take the uh, a second quart, which is good because that stuff's expensive. Now on uh, like some of the trucks, uh, especially Chevrolet trucks, they have a very huge reservoir on the master cylinder and those are guaranteed gonna take two quarts, possibly even three quarts. Anyway, that looks pretty good. Nice and clear. Yeah, let's go ahead and close that up. And just like the other side, we'll sneak our wrench back there and try to close this valve without pulling the hose off. I know I'm gonna open it again in a moment, but I just like to prevent that, that vacuum that's present in the system from drawing in air, even if it's just momentarily. Okay. Purge out what may be there, what may not be. Ooh, I got that tight. How did I do that? Uh, unclick. Seriously? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. No air. And of course, we'll put our little uh, cap thing back on. That'll keep water from entering that valve and making it rust. All right, let's move on to the right front wheel. We're halfway done. Our level is still looking good. We've got plenty of fluid left for the uh, front two calipers. This one's gonna be a little bit easier. We have some, uh, some extra space in here to play with. There's our cap. And yeah, that's a that's 10 millimeter, okay. Fortunately, I still have a 10 millimeter in my pocket, except it's a nine millimeter, okay. Except that's an eight millimeter, okay. So uh, fortunately, I still have an eight millimeter in my pocket. And, aha, uh -huh, what? It's a nine mil, what is this? I never even used my nine mil. I've never used my nine mil. Hang on here. Yep, there it is. There's the nine. Shiny. Mm, let's try this again. It got me. The Euro Ford Engineering got me. Unclick. Okay, we've got flow, that's good. Get our hose on there and let it ride. Now I'm gonna let this thing run down until it's at the halfway mark on this reservoir. So I'm gonna flush out that entire caliber, caliper with all this fluid here. We'll close it off and we'll flush out the rest of the fluid here with the right front caliper. Now you'll notice the way this is labeled it basically says master cylinder and then start your wheels. We did the master cylinder first, that way we were not uh, 
or we didn't use the machine rather to uh, to fill the master cylinder. I just filled it manually, so we kind of had some extra left over in the reservoir. It's a personal preference. I like to do it that way. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. That's just kind of my way. That's oily too. Ugh. There we go. Decontaminate the flanges. Okay, we're getting close. A few more seconds and we're ready to rock with that uh, that left front. You know, I bet I can speed this up. Hang on, let's close this off real quick and recover my wrench. I bet if I crack this valve open a little more, it'll speed up the process. There we go, two turns. Let's see if this is gonna go any faster. And it is. Yeah, we got some flow going now. See the line right here? Much more better. Oh, and all the old fluid that this thing recovers, it ends up in this tank down here. Pretty nasty. And you just dump that tank out with your waste oil and then have that disposed of and recycled. Okay, compressor just came back on again. The machine says we're good to go. Let's go ahead and close that valve off. Check it real quick for contaminants. We're just looking for bubbles. Nice clean fluid, perfect. Okay. All right, let's get the cap on there and move over to the, uh, the left front. So that's three down, one to go. Here, we'll hang that here. This guy goes over yonder, give me that put you aside where's my nine yeah this job is like loud noises galore it's just a constant between the compressor and the pump lots of noises spin that guy open and we got flow so I'm gonna go ahead and run this down probably till it's nearly empty and that should conclude the fluid exchange regarding our brake hydraulic fluid what you doing Oh, what is that? Hey. Are you drinking on the job? No. You're drinking? It's empty. You are so fired. Oh, it's empty. That means you drank it all. You're so fired. Stop. Fired. <laughs> we got you. We totally got you. All right, this thing should be done by now. Uh, nearly. Hang on, how close are we? Yeah, almost there. Close enough for me. Let's close up our valve and inspect our fluid condition. There we go. Watch the pump speed up once it purges the line. There we go. I like to listen to this vacuum pump. It's a good one. Anyway, let's see what we get. Are we clear? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, we're good. That's brand new fluid. Click. Beautiful. Put our cap on, power our machine down. Pew. And uh, that is that, that is a brake system fluid exchange. Now, what we do not do is attempt to disconnect this fitting right here because this system is still under pressure. So what we need to do is release said pressure. And that's not gonna work with our line attached. Hang on here. Now it'll go. Very good. Close our valve, disconnect, and that's a clean spill-free transition. And look at that. Nice, clean, not corroded or contaminated brake fluid. But you'll notice we're a little high on our level, aren't we? Our max line is here. We started off down here, it's sort of near the min line, but we're a little over. So what we do is we come back over and power our machine back on one more time. Fire up the vacuum one more time. We take our vacuum. Wipe that off, hang on, there we go, nice and clean. And we'll just vacuum some of that fluid out. vacuuming things. We'll vacuum some of that out until we've reached the proper level. 
which is right about there, if I spy correct with my little eye. That looks good. Put that guy back in, repowering down. Pew. And that is a service complete. Really? Uh, awkward. Hang on here. Let's put that right back where it goes. Stay. Stay there. All right, everybody, that's that. Service complete. We're good to go. Hope you enjoyed this brake fluid exchange. I, I know I've been promising you guys forever and ever and ever since I, I held a job once upon a time that I would, uh, I would do a more detailed fluid exchange. Um, I would have loved to have done it earlier, but our machines were, uh, let's call them less than existent, and I wasn't able to uh, do such a service um, in, the, in the level that I wanted to, which is why I've never made a video about it before. So this is the first ever brake fluid exchange that I've ever performed on camera. I hope you guys enjoyed this procedure. Uh, I hope I explained it clearly enough to, uh, to understand. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know about those in the comment section down below. Um, if you're gonna ask, most people suggest uh, a fluid exchange service to be done at every 30,000 miles or with a brake job, whichever comes first. Probably the 30,000 miles. Uh, anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just uh, register those down below in the comment section. So with that being said, uh, as always, and again, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of new view. Not sponsored. That's just what it says.